Now, look, I mentioned earlier today in my radio program that this hasn't received a lot of attention, but it should. In fact, I learned about this by chance when someone bailed me up at Melbourne Airport. And to be honest, I didn't know what he was talking about. This is the currency restrictions on the use of cash bill 2019. Basically, it'll ban the use of cash transactions over $10,000. If you breach the rules, you could face up two years in jail. It has already amazingly passed the House of Representatives where Labor voted to support it. God knows what the coalition were doing. Many people have now written to me, including members of the Parliament, telling me it's a bad idea, Liberal members. The Senate referred the bill to their references committee, which handed down its findings last week. The Senate inquiry backed the bill and the Senate committee recommended the bill be passed contingent upon several changes, including that the start date be extended to give businesses sufficient time to comply. But what the hell is a Conservative government? I mean, is it really Conservative? What's it up to here? The law was due to take hold on January 1 this year. Thankfully, it's not going to be applied retrospectively, but many members of the Liberal Party are saying it's antithetical to the party's values, and it is. I mean, listen to this. The Senate inquiry received 2,659 submissions by early December, the majority opposed the bill. Many rightly argue that the government should not be interfering with an individual's legal right to spend cash how he or she wishes. The federal government says the measure is intended to fight the black economy by stamping out tax evasion. People wouldn't be evading tax if the tax system wasn't so ridiculously punitive. But there are now concerns that the government down the track could reduce the cash payment limit below $10,000. I might add, no evidence has been presented that the black economy, that's where people don't pay tax when they should, there is no evidence that it is a significant problem. Indeed, IMF research shows that the Australian black economy is small and has been shrinking. And this bill is supposedly based on a half-page costs and benefits analysis in the Black Economy Task Force final report. I went to this on page 54. It consists of four paragraphs. The last one's one sentence. There is very little evidence in the final report of this task force that our black economy is a problem. Oddly enough, the Greens seem to get it right here, where this Senator Peter Wish Wilson said the bill is a classic case of the cure being worse than the disease. He rightly said a fundamental characteristic of most market economies was the ability to use hard currency to buy and sell goods and services. And he rightly said if the government wanted to fight tax avoidance, it could make public, quote, the behind-closed-door settlements between the tax office and multinationals about how much tax they pay. Anyway, the law will apply to all payments over $10,000 made to businesses with an ABN for goods and services. So it would affect major purchases like cars and building renovations. I wonder what the hell a Liberal government is doing, though, in this field. The Australian Funeral Directors Association were right when they called for an exemption for their industry noting correctly that many elderly Australians and migrant communities may have avoided the banks when putting money aside to save for a significant event like a death. One nation have argued rightly it would push Australians into the clutches of the banks. But it's not just one nation. A Victorian Liberal Party member, Steve Holland, moved a motion in November to have the bill dropped and he has lobbied Josh Frydenberg accordingly. The bill's explanatory memorandum doesn't say how much expenditure is needed to enforce the law. The Law Council of Australia has argued the law could result in unintended consequences, whereby ordinary Australians would be caught out by the law. The Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry rightly argued there was no legitimate evidence that the proposed law would stop the black economy. Yet in spite of 2,659 submissions to the Senate inquiry, the majority of which opposed the bill, this thing looks set to become law. Senator Malcolm Roberts is a Queensland One Nation senator. He's highly intelligent and he's done a lot of work on this issue. And he joins us from Canberra. Malcolm Roberts, thank you for your time. What is the status of this? Where is this bill at the moment? Well, let's look at the big picture first, Alan. The bill is, is currently in, um, about to be introduced into the Senate with some, well, if, if it's introduced at all. But let, let's look at the bigger picture. It, this is an issue about freedom versus control, and it's about trust. We have money that's legal tender throughout Australia. This is about people earning our hard-earned money and being able to f be freely uh, choosing how to spend it. That's what it's about. Not the government telling us we should not be jailed for using legal tender, Alan. 
So at the moment, it's standing that the, the uh, One Nation, we opposed it right from the start. We got Centre Alliance on board. They were shocked when, the, when we told them what was going on. And we got the Greens on board. Then we approached the Labor Party. The Labor Party whistled it through the lower house, but then they woke up to themselves and sent it to a committee because this is going to hurt their core. So I don't know what the Liberal Party is doing because we see there's a revolt. We've, we've heard some comments about Liberal MPs not being at all impressed with this and going to Morrison. So uh, it's in a bit of a mess. And the, uh, the report that came out last Friday, if you read between the lines, it is a mess. This is a dog of a Bill Allen. So it's confused as to where people are other than the crossbench. We're totally opposed to it. And just before uh, Peter, uh, uh, come to Peter here, this forces people into the banking system, doesn't it? which many people are uncomfortable with given what's recently occurred in the banking industry and of course that means and people worry that the banking system then for those transactions could charge these people whatever fee they want. Malcolm, you there? Oh, I, I, yeah, I thought you were talking no, no, to Peter no, then. No, no, You're no. absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Alan. It drives people into the banks. We, we will be forced to deposit our money in the banks and that eliminates the competition. We must use a bank. But the second thing it does is it increases bank fees because then banks will be able, the big four especially, will be able to charge whatever they want. And then there's a worse thing coming down the road. It's already happening in Europe, it's happening in Japan, Germany, Switzerland of all places, negative interest rates. Negative interest rates are where the depositor pays the bank for the, for the uh, opportunity to, to deposit money in the bank. When there's no more cash, mate, You've got to throw it in the bank where you'll get charged fees and you'll be charged fees for transferring and paying people. I mean, this is absurd. Right now, I can go without fees and just pay someone cash. Yeah. Without, when this Absolutely. comes in, not, no more. Peter. I'll be devil's advocate here. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I don't think I've ever paid in cash for anything close to $10,000. Now, that doesn't, it's an anecdotal story. I know that's not, not beyond just uh, me, but... I guess what they're trying to do, Senator Roberts, is uh, to stop, you know, recent example when I was helping mum renovate a house, uh, the bloke coming and saying, well, it'll cost you $11,000 to paint it, but you pay me in cash and you can have it for, you know, nine and a half. I suppose that they're trying to stop people getting discounts and not appropriately paying the GST. How do you resolve that problem that we get the right amount of tax collected? but people keep their freedoms to use cash. Just to answer, coming into there before Malcolm answers, so couldn't that person just, couldn't I just bill you 5,000 and 5,000 and 5,000, you keep well, paying you, me? I presume. You could keep, you could keep paying me 5,000, so... I, yeah, I presume. Malcolm? But, I mean, the, the point they're trying Sorry. to do well, is collect the GST. So how, how do you ensure that, you know, everyone fairly pays the right amount of tax, as we all should, uh, but we don't take away the freedom of people to use cash? There, there are two issues, first of all, Peter. Um, the, the use of cash is, is by people going about daily business, honest Australians, is trivial compared to the real black market, which is about the criminal market. And that will continue. Uh, what will happen is they will continue to use artworks, gold, silver, stored value cards, and, and so on. They'll continue to exchange houses and, and cars. That won't stop with this. Mm. But see, uh, Peter's so point is valid. Peter's point is valid. Peter's saying is, and I don't think there's an answer to the question, but she says, well, how do you make sure that people pay the right amount of tax? Now, you've got a bloke here who seems to have more money coming out of his ears and his, and, and his hip pockets and everything. This fellow, what is his name, Cannon Brooks. And he has a company called Atlassian, which reportedly, I say reportedly, earns a billion dollars in revenue in Australia, mm -hmm. but is so structured that he pays no corporate tax. Gina Reinhardt pays $352 million in company tax. Now, surely it's easy to get the low-hanging fruit. My understanding is the IMF said we're the 11th smallest co economy in the world in relation to tax evasion. And I noticed in that Senate inquiry, they questioned this fellow, Patrick Bonham, from the Treasury, who admitted that the bill lacks empirical evidence, and he said is based on a half-page costs and benefits analysis in the Black Economy Task Force. And the final report said there was inadequate evidence that our black economy is a significant problem. What the hell? 
Well, let's come back to Alan, uh, to Peter's point, uh, Alan. I said there were two, two uh, parts to the answer. The first is, is uh, the use of cash, but the second is the use of the proper taxation system. At the moment, the taxation system is heavily skewed onto families. 90% of Australia's large companies are foreign owned, and since 1953, have paid little or no company That's tax. Correct. That is fact. And so what you've done, you hit the nail on the head this morning because you raised this issue as well. What we need to do, Peter, is to make sure that we have a fair tax system, one that is transparent and one that is seen to be fair, and then people will pay their tax. And then you put in penalties, fair penalties in a fair tax system, that if you avoid tax in a court, then you're really done over. Because paying a fair tax, Everyone, wants to, everyone will be happy to do that. They, dis, they dislike paying unfair tax when they know that people like uh, the one Alan just mentioned, uh, Mike Atlassian, and many foreign-owned companies don't pay tax and just use our infrastructure that we pay for. So where do we go from here? I mean, basically, this is criminalising cash. I mean, we, I suppose, burn the $100 bills, do me. Where, where do we go from here? Are you confident this is going to pass the Senate? This will be law. No, I'm not confident at all, Alan. I've heard a number of MPs now talking about not passing it. I'm talking about lower house as well. The Liberals are in, in revolt in some places. Stephen Holland, the member who, who organised that revolt in Victoria, for example, one of the revolts, I spoke with him. He's determined. Uh, some of the MPs in the Labor Party are not at all happy. In fact, they're very unhappy. Well, just the on this, the Victorian State Council of the Liberal Party, mm -hmm. the Victorian State Council of the Liberal Party overwhelmingly rejected the bill, a bill in a vote by 95% of its members. Yeah, oh, wow. I, mean, I mean, I'm sympathetic to... The, I'm very sympathetic, I have to say, to the arguments of Liberals mm. that this is an, uh, an affront to the philosophy of the party. Mm. I, I am... As a taxpayer, I want to sure. see people pay the right, right. amount of tax. Right. And if there is a loophole, and mm. I'm not convinced this is the mm. way to close but As it, Malcolm says, issue. you can easily get the little wage and salary earner. That poor little coot, that you can't escape any tax well, this at all. Well, this is who it'll <laughs> capture. This is yet again. And yeah. you go back to your example, the yeah. Cannon Brooks type of that yeah. Lassian guy who is not paying tax in Believe Australia. Them. I know. It's still got plenty but of wear all and, the Google, big houses. Google and Apple are in the same boat. So just, Malcolm, before we go, just explain to our, our viewers again. So this will go back to the Senate and it'll be amended. So that means it'll go back to the House. Yes, it will if that, it gets amended well, in the Senate. Yeah, no, that's if it ever comes into the Senate. I don't know what will happen now because, it's, because the, uh, there have been eight recommendations. Seven of them are, are very strong recommendations. And if you read between the lines, Alan, it's a dog. That, mm. That's what they're saying. Uh, and, and they'll probably send it back to the government for, for redoing because I don't think the Senate will... The Labor Party has whistled through a lot of these things with the Liberal Party in the past because the banks are their mates, but the L Labor Party will really be abandoning its core because none of the crossbench will support this. Okay. And so what the key points, Alan, are that w the black market won't be solved by this because the major players couldn't care less about this. The second thing is that after the Royal Commission into the financial sector... This is the last thing we need, to give the banks more power. Yes. And the third thing is this will destroy trust, the public's trust, in banks and in government, government itself. This is the government undermining what it has told us our currency is legal tender across our country. This is the government putting a stake in the heart of every person in this country. Well done. Well argued, Malcolm. Good. Uh, thank, you. thank you for talking to us. Malcolm Roberts.